Well, the cat's out of the bag, or should I say, Stephen's out of the house. We are separated. We have separated. We are separated. We've separated. We're separated. That sounds, it's just weird to say. I'm just <clears throat> getting the hang of it. And I'm going to sound crazy right now. Uh, and maybe some of you think heartless, but I feel really good. I feel really, really good, overwhelmingly good about this decision. And actually, I think I'm not alone. Steven was here this morning to pick up Alfie for school, and we had a great conversation, a lot of laughs. We have a better dynamic. We love our kids so much and adore them, and I'll always love Stephen and adore him and enjoy him, and same, uh, I think he feels the same way about me, and we truly want the best for each other. We truly do, and I think neither one of us wanted to admit that it wasn't working anymore. We just couldn't. We were holding on to this, you know, epic love story that we had that was started over 10 years ago and we built this life together and made these kids together and it just I don't think either one of us could bear to say that this wasn't working anymore but it wasn't I always say that you know when it comes to like my drinking or using, you know, it was fun and then it was fun with problems and then it was just problems. And if I look at our relationship, it was fun. And then it was fun with problems. And then it sort of just became problems. The negative stuff started to outweigh the positive stuff. I would get messages like, you used to be so funny. Why aren't you making funny content? I didn't fucking feel funny, dude. It was so negative and dysfunctional and toxic in the end that I was feeling broken. I wasn't feeling like my optimistic self. You know, where I see the funny and everything. No, I was just trying to survive and get by day by day. Um, and then it all kind of exploded for reasons that I'm going to you know, I look, I'm happy to talk about what's going on. And I know that some of you are going to say, oh, this is private. I can't believe you're doing this. Well, you know, I believe that, and I said this in the last podcast, that we're as sick as our secrets. And I am so sick and tired of everything being a private issue. And we don't talk about family issues. And no, sorry, this is what's going on. I mean, you're going to know anyway. It's very clear. He's not living with me. Um, that being said, there's personal details that will remain personal for the sake of the kids. Um, but nonetheless, some things came out and boundaries were crossed and Stephen had a mental breakdown and it sort of needed to get to that point, I guess, for both of us to make real change. And he is doing his part and working his program and that's great and I'm happy for him. But I know, I know that I cannot change him, who he is, what he wants to do, if he wants to get better. And I think there is something so incredibly freeing about really truly realizing that. Really truly understanding that I am so powerless over people, places, things, situations, and to spend my precious energy focusing on what I can control and then surrendering the rest. There's something so powerful about that and so freeing. And it's like a weight truly is lifted off my shoulders. I truly feel so light. And, and guess what? I adore him and I want nothing but the best for him. I really do. Like I really, really do. 
And even when he was being unkind or, you know, we all have character defects and when he was in his, I can look and still have compassion for him and what he was going through and lovingly detach from that. And I believe he's doing the same with me. So yes, we are able to right now today, co-parent peacefully, be separated, work on ourselves and being the best parents we can and being of service through our work and, and, you know, keeping our side of the street clean. For me, um, I am calling my sponsor all the time. I have weekly appointments with my psychiatrist, which is very helpful. I'm listening to inspiring books. I am meditating. I, of course, have moments of rage or anger and resentment. That's natural, and I'm feeling those. But overwhelmingly, I feel free. I feel like I made the right decision. And so it doesn't feel like this horrible fight. It did feel like a horrible fight when we were living together. That felt like we were fighting to to hold on to this thing that we once had that was just no longer there, at least right now. And that's another thing is staying in today, truly staying in today. I was just talking to Dr. Amen um, about The Power of Now, which is both of our favorite books and book. And you've probably all read it or listened to it, but just quickly, it's Eckhart Tolle believes that the only way to attain real inner peace and bliss, which is what he believes is our natural state, is to be fully in this moment right here, right now with me. You're here right now watching or listening to this right now. And if you are fully here with me right now, listening to these words, then you have a chance (laughs) at real inner peace because you're practicing being fully present and in this moment. And we have that choice that we can make throughout the day to get back into this moment right now that he says in this book, we spend nearly 70% of our lives thinking about what was or what's going to be. And when we're thinking about what was, it often leads to depression. Oh, this is what I have with what I had with Stephen or oh, this time that he hurt me or this time, this fight or this thing, or how could he? And it often leads to sadness and depression or anxiety. What's going to happen? Oh my God, is he going to go fucking Kanye on me and and start going crazy? And what's the future going to bring? And, you know, uh, are we going to have a horrible divorce and, you know, mess up our kids for the rest of our, you know, it's creating these fictional scenarios that have not happened because I'm thinking about the future and that causes anxiety and fear. So then I, I catch myself and I have, and I make that decision to bring my thoughts and my energy back into this moment in time. And right here, right now, I'm just with you telling you my truth. And that's all that's happening. And I'm okay. And you're okay. Cause I know you're okay. Cause I know you're okay. Because I know you're okay because you're listening to my fucking podcast. So I know you're okay. Because if you really weren't okay, you wouldn't be listening to the podcast. You'd be being chased by a motherfucking lion. But right now in this moment, you're listening to a podcast. So you're okay right now. Not in not trying to invalidate anything you're going through. So that. So I'm really, truly practicing staying in today. When I catch myself going, oh oh God, oh God, what's going to happen? Or how could he? Or poor me. Do re me, 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 me. No, just right now, right here in this moment. Everything's okay. And actually better than okay. 
you know, I, when he comes here, and by the way, I just want to let you know that we have spoken about talking about what's going on on our social media because, and for those of you like take time off, nope, it's kind of, it's a, it is our job. It is our job. You know, you go, you go through breakups. Can you just stop working? No, you have to pay the bills. You have to keep moving forward. You have to, we, sorry, this capitalist society does not allow otherwise. So this is our job actually. And, but <laughs> that being said, I have to say, I was very surprised when the video popped up. I separated from my wife um, on YouTube yesterday because I he did not speak to me about that video. And I started getting all these calls and text messages from friends. Are you okay? Are you okay? Huh? Oh, there's the video. And so I did have a talk with him. I said, hey, I actually don't mind if you talk about it because it's the truth. And I believe that vulnerability is strength. So that's fine, but maybe give me a little heads up, just a little warning so I can mentally prepare. <gasps> Sorry about that. No, it's fine. I'll take it down. No, no. Hundreds of thousands of people have seen it already. That's okay. It's okay. It's actually okay. But next time, let me know. <laughs> and he did. So, um, I've been reaching out to like all my friends, just all the people that I've let slide. Because I think when you're in, especially like a codependent relationship, you let your friendship slide. I let my program slide. I just was isolating myself. I wasn't really even talking to my sister. And I talked to my mom always. That didn't change. But my sisters, um, I just let all those relationships slide because I was so in it with him. And so now that I have a little space, I'm calling all of my friends and it's amazing. Like I'm going to see my friend Manon after this. Well, I'm picking uh, my son up from school. And then after that, I'm going to go have a lunch with her. And I'm so excited. And we had been talking about going to lunch for literally, honestly, maybe a year. I swear it's really sad that we, ha we hadn't. But I'm just so excited. And I've been just surrounding myself with friends like over the weekend, you know, not be not having him there, you know, all the time is different. So my friend Maggie, who y'all know from my book, Maggie, you know, Maggie, I told you many things about Maggie. Y'all know Maggie. So my friend Maggie, who we've been best friends since third grade, she had, she has two kids. Her first son is five days apart from Alfie. Her second son is two days apart from Poppy. And we did not plan it. And so she came over with her 16 month old and um, we spent all day Saturday together and it was amazing and lovely. And my point is that I understand that I can't do this alone. And, and did I want to just be alone and isolate? Yes. But I just kind of go through it anyway. And I am just reaching out to my friends and people who are good people and who care and who want the best for me and I want the best for them. And it feels really, really good to do that. It's very exciting to, to do that. I, I feel, I just feel good about it. I, my sponsor has given me work to write a whole letter to Stephen um, about things that hurt me and what I expect from our relationship, you know, whatever that relationship, you know, is co-parenting, just existing together. We have kids together. And so I'm in the process of tweaking that and it just feels good. It feels good to just be in the action and just, you know, I went for my walk this morning and just getting out to, you know, those of you who know, I struggled with postpartum depression and the thing that saved me the most was going on those serenity walks in the morning, just even if 
It's five minutes just getting out and being in nature for just five minutes and getting grateful. So uh, that that feels really good. Um, I talked to my friend Andy that he's another like childhood friend that reached out to me who went through a separation and he told me his whole story and it was just so amazing and beautiful to get to talk to these people in my lives who I have neglected for so long, or maybe not neglected, but we've just grown apart. And to just reconnect with dear friends has been incredible. Um, Going back to women's meetings, I feel like a newcomer again. For those of you who don't know, a newcomer is like when you're in your first 30 days of sobriety. I went in there just like so full of fear and all these women are like smiling and laughing and happy. And I'm just like, what the fuck are you so happy about? And that's exactly how I felt when I was a newcomer, I didn't understand y'all must be high right now. You must be because you're laughing way too much. Give me some, give me some of that. (laughs) Nope. They just have that glow. And so I felt really weird and uncomfortable, but I shared and, um, you know, I knew some women in there and, and it felt better by the end. So I know it's just taking it day by day and right today it's a good day. And I never thought this. I just, I never thought this. And I wonder, look, if you are going through something similar (laughs) and you're terrified to do anything about it because you're terrified of change because change is so scary. Change can be so scary. And if you're so scared to, to, you know, make a move and do something that you know is actually best for you. That if your gut is telling you that something needs to change, whether, you know, it doesn't have to be a separation. I'm not even saying that just anything in your life that you know is toxic, that you know is not working, you know, because your gut is telling you and your gut has been telling you and it was a whisper and then it got louder and the knot got bigger and you just know in your heart and in your gut that change needs to happen, but you're so scared. You're so scared that you're going to lose what you have. You're so scared that it's not going to work. You're so scared. It's all going to fall apart. You're so scared of what they're going to say or what they're not going to say. You know, I'm just here to tell you that it's possible that it will work out better than you could have ever imagined. If anyone said to me, came up to me four months ago and said, Hey, why don't you try separating from your husband and living alone with your kids and seeing him on the weekends? Why don't you try that? I would have gasped. I would have been outraged. I would have said, absolutely not. There's no way. That would have been the scariest thought to me ever. What is he going to say? Is he going to lose it? Is he going to even more reason to separate? If I'm so scared of your response and how you're going to act when I tell you I need space, even more reason to get space. Being driven by fear is death. Being driven by fear is misery. Being driven by fear is not a place I want to live. I want to be driven and make decisions based on love. And yes, it we hit a bottom And then I made a decision based on love. I had been begging him for years to do couples therapy and this and that and this and that. And it was like pulling teeth. It just wasn't happening. And that's okay. He was where he was. And my part is tolerating stuff that I wouldn't normally tolerate because I was so scared to be on my own. Those old ideas that I'm incapable, that I'm not smart enough, that I'll never be able to do it. I can't even turn on a hot tub. I don't know how to function. I need help. I'm scared. I was driven by fear and it led me to stay in a relationship that was no longer healthy for me. And then it got so bad that I just decided to make that faith-based, that love-based decision and separate. And guess what? It has been better than I could have ever imagined. And I know maybe some of you are thinking, oh, just wait, it's going to get crazy. Mm, I'm in today, girl. And today it's okay. Today it feels good. And not just on my part, 
Stephen too. He's, when he comes here now, he's happier because he's getting that space and he's working on himself. I'm happier. I truly want nothing but the best for him. I want him to be so happy and fulfilled and just keep using his gifts to heal the world. I really do. I'm really excited for him to keep helping to heal people through through his music, because I believe it's truly, he's a genius. And, um, and I just wish him nothing but the best. I really do. I, and he's an amazing dad. And I'm just, and we, we built an amazing life together. And it was fun. And then it was fun with problems. Then it was just problems. And now we're taking that space and it feels so right. And so I guess you know, maybe me sharing my experience with you, because that, it wasn't my, my, my first thought wasn't, oh, let me publicize this. I sort of, Stephen sort of suggested that, and I was apprehensive, but, but I do feel there's a way to share your experience, strength, and hope in a, in a respectful way. And I have a daughter and I have a son and I want to teach them to not tolerate being treated unfairly because you're in fear and you don't think you're capable of doing it on your own. You know, I grew up with, with that. I mean, my mom is incredible and amazing and I love her so much, but I begged her to, to get a divorce time and time again because my father is, was, and is an alcoholic. And that is scary and unpredictable. And I just begged and, you know, for one reason or another, uh, she didn't do it. And I'm not resentful at her. And, you know, they're actually kind of cute now in their old age. And I understand, I understand the fear around it. I understand the fear of not thinking you can survive without them or they're the ones making the money and so you have to stay or no one in your family gets divorced you can't be that you can't do that I, I i understand it but my mom even said to me the other day she goes all we can hope for is that our kids turn out better than us and and evolve more evolved than us and that's all i want for my kids i just want them to be better more, you know, more evolved, not versions of us because they are very much their own person, but just better than me. I just want them to be better than me. <laughs> and that's what my mom wants. She's like, that's all we can hope for, you know? So in my case, though my kids are too young to even I say they're too young to understand, but no, that's not true. They can pick up on energy and arguments. Alfie can't say it, but he's certainly kind of screamed when, you know, him and I have been in an argument. They can sense it. And so I felt incredibly compelled when it got that bad to to take that action and to, and to separate for, for them. Cause maybe my codependent fear driven self would have stayed, but that is, that's not the place I'm living in today. And I hope that that's not the place you're living in. And if it is just know that as a course in miracle says, the definition of a miracle is a shift in perception from fear to love and you can make that shift just with a decision ask yourself right now are you are you acting from a place of fear or love and if it's fear can you consciously decide to take that faith-based love-based action that deep down you know you deserve because in the end it feels it feels it feels much better. And I'll shut up now. Please, if you're watching this on YouTube, 
subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting weekly episodes. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, just hit the follow button and I will keep you updated, bitches. Never thought my life would be here, but it is. And we're embracing it. We are embracing it. If you want to know backstory on our epic love story, because it really was, I stand by that. I write about it all in my first book, Idiot, and it continues on to my second book, Idiots. So you can get that uh, Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Audible if you want to listen. And I just love you so much. And thank you for listening and coming on this journey. And I hope that you got something out of it. And if you are in a similar situation or you were, please share your experience with me um, in the comments on my YouTube. I read them all and I appreciate them all. And I appreciate you all. So, so much love to you. Let's all stay in today. Let's do that. Let's do it. Should we do it? Let's do it. Okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. Okay.